So I want to talk to you guys about the Turkish defense industry. There has been a lot of attention given to uh, Turkey's defense industry because of the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia, because the Ukrainians have been effectively using Turkey's first ever indigenously made drone, the Bayraktar TB2 drone. And the Ukrainians have been using this drone to destroy Russian tanks. There was even a song that was made recently dedicated to the Bayraktar drone. Прийшли окупанти до нас в Україну, форма новенька воєнні машини, та трохи поплавився їх інвентар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Російські танкісти сховались в кущі, щоб лаптю посорбати довбані щі, та трохи у щах перегрівся навар. Байрактар. Байрактар Зі сходу припхались до нас барани Для восстановления великой страны Найкращий пастух баранячий хотар Байрактар This drone was used in Libya to fight against the forces of Khalifa Haftar in defense of the internationally recognized government of national accord, which the Turks backed. This drone was used in northern Syria. It was used against the Kurds. And it was also used in Ethiopia uh, against the, uh, uh, the, the Tigray separatists in Ethiopia's civil war. And then 2020 came, and there was a war that broke out between the Armenians and the Azeris over Nagorno-Karabakh. And the world watched as the Bayraktar TB2 drone slaughtered Armenian soldiers. And thousands of Armenian soldiers were killed by the Azeris. And that was greatly due, significantly due to the fact that the Aziris had this Turkish-made drone. You see, the drone was used before that. Like I said, it was used in Syria, Libya, uh, Ethiopia. But really, really, this drone grabbed the eyes of the world when the Aziris got their victory over the Armenians using this drone. And that war that broke out in 2020 between the Armenians and the Azeris, that war really demonstrated the effectiveness of Turkey's drone. And it really showed the world that Turkey can indeed make extremely destructive yet efficient military technology. And so the Poles saw what this drone did and said, we want some of those drones. Hand them over. And the Ukrainians saw what this drone did to the Armenians. And they said, we want some of those drones. And they forked out a lot of money to get those Bayraktar drones. And it's interesting. The Armenians are an ally to Russia. And so the Ukrainians watched as these Russian allies were slaughtered by a NATO country, by NATO technology, specifically Turkish technology. And Turkey is the second most armed country in NATO, so it's pretty serious. Now, the Bayraktar drone was invented by a guy named Seljuk Bayraktar. This guy had a lot of his training in the United States, but before that, in the late 1990s, he studied in Turkey. He specifically studied in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering in Istanbul Technical University. He was then recognized um, in the United States and he got a scholarship uh, from the GRASP laboratory at the University of Pennsylvania where he received a master's degree in 2004. Now in 2005, uh, Bayraktar gave a presentation in Turkey in which he talked about actually 
getting Turkey to develop its own drone. And he really had this vision of Turkey um, indigenously developing its own technology, uh, not having to, to depend on the United States. In 2021, Bayraktar actually affirmed that uh, the, uh, the unmanned vehicle uh, will eventually replace uh, fifth generation aircraft. And really, when he said this, he was specifically aiming towards the American F-35, which is one of America's most prized pieces of military technology. But Bayraktar believes that eventually, uh, technology like the TB-2 will replace fifth generation aircraft. And he really, really um, holds to this vision. But he had really, he, he had this vision years ago, back in the early 2000s. And he was um, further recognized in the United States. And he was uh, offered a further scholarship by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And in this institute, he pursued his studies under the supervision of George Pappas and Eric Farom. And under these two professors' uh, uh, supervision, Bayraktar earned his second master's degree with his research in autonomous aggressive maneuvering of unmanned helicopter systems. So he really got a lot of his education in the United States, which really goes to show you that Turkey's uh, uh, development of this drone is ultimately thanks to American training and education. And so now the Turkish defense industry has expanded even more. It has become even more internationally recognized because now it's being used in an even bigger war. And its effectiveness is being demonstrated in a much bigger war against a, a much bigger enemy, which is Russia in the eyes of NATO. So the Turkish defense industry is expanding and the world is praising this Bayraktar drone. You know what that reminds me of? That giant cannon that the Turks got to destroy what was left of the Roman Empire in 1453 when they conquered and ravished the city of Constantinople. That's what that reminds me of. So now I want to take some time to really express myself because initially I was going to make this video just about the Turkish defense industry, but in making this video, I watched some footage of the Bayraktar drone slaughtering people. That's what this thing does. It kills people. Now, we can sit here and talk about how it's effective in the battlefield, or I could sit here and say something like, you know, I, I, I watched some footage of the Bayraktar, and, and, I, and I really got a chance to see its demonstration in the battlefield. Uh, or I could sit here and say something like, you know, it, it really demonstrates itself as an effective uh, 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 piece of technology for warfare or whatever. But it kills people. That's what this thing does. It slaughters people, okay? You see this thing, it, you, you see these soldiers walking, and boom, some guy is missing a leg, some guy is missing an arm, people are, are, are losing their limbs, people are blown to pieces by this technology by some guy in a room with a joystick in his hand, and he just hits a button. Boom, people are dead. And we can sit here and talk about this thing as if it's a video game. And, and a lot of people talk this way, especially online. They'll sit there and they'll watch these videos and they'll be like, oh wow, it's really effective, as if they're watching Call of Duty or some garbage, some video game. It's not a video game. These are humans being butchered. And you watch these videos, be it of Syrian soldiers, be it of Armenian soldiers, be it of, of, of Libyan soldiers, of, of Russian soldiers, and you see these videos and you see the bodies. And at, at, at one moment, these guys are walking and in just a second, they're dead. They're butchered. And I look at this footage, I look at these videos, and I'm thinking... Each one of these soldiers, 
at one point was a child. A child whose parents raised up. A child whose parents invested the time to raise up. Years, decades of being taken care of by their parents. Decades of time in which their parents raised up this child. And you just and you just see these people just like that slaughtered. And I and I look at this footage and I think I think goodness war is just it's hell. You know, but it, these are human beings and to sit here and talk about these drones like they're just amazing, they're effective, they these things are slaughtering people. And for us to look at these videos as if we're watching a video game, I, I think that's just messed up.